computer. Should we give more time so people can log in or we should we start? I think it's already four or five minutes. We should start. Um, I think uh, we are ready to go now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, thank you to join us. And today we are going to celebrate uh, Open Access Week 2021. We are very pleased to be able to arrange the open access question and answer session to celebrate the open access week this year with the collaboration of business uh, open business top school of business bangladesh open university and the librarian times um this year theme intentionally aligned with the recently released UNESCO recommendation on open science of which open access is a crucial component. The theme for this year is, it matters how we open knowledge, building structural equity. Why the open access matters? and why we should celebrate Open Access Week. Let me briefly focus some key points and um, the principles of Open Access. Education is a fundamental human rights. We support and celebrate the creation and sharing of knowledge by all people in all contexts. All countries' government should require publicly funded education resources be openly licensed, ensuring the public has the legal rights to retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute the resources. And open is not the opposite of private. We actively advocate for privacy protections in the technologies that we develop and use. The event is arranged based on the theme of 2020, 2021 Open Access Week. On behalf of the Libyan Times, I am Pradeep Roy, going to be the host of this session. And I would like to welcome everyone. Before I introduce our speaker, I would like to cover a few housekeeping things. Um, firstly, this session is being recorded. We will be able to share the link with all of you after the event is complete. And we also invite your comments and questions. Please um, look at the question and answer chat box on your screen. If you think of a question for the speaker at any point, just type your question into the chat box and I will either pose it to our speaker at that time or hold it for the discussion at the end of our session. Um, and please make sure everyone your mic is muted. Today's presenter and guest and speaker is Professor Mostafa Ajat Kamal. Let me quickly introduce him. He is a professor in international and development economics. He has been engaged in open and distance learning for last 22 years. I think more than 22 years now. He has been a member of the International Academic Board for Commonwealth Executive MBA and MPA programs, Commonwealth of Learning, Vancouver, Canada. He has also been a consultant of Commonwealth of Learning for TEL, ODL, and OER. Professor Mostova is a Creative Commons certified trainer on open educational resources and open licenses. He's also a Creative Commons fellow for open leadership. Professor Mostafa 
is one of the country representative for Creative Commons Bangladesh chapter and member of the 15th member central membership committee of Creative Commons. He is the president of the Center for Open Knowledge, Bangladesh. And he got experience coordinating, supporting, and evaluating several international and national projects relating to e-learning, open educational resources, and quality assurance in higher education. Welcome, Professor Mustafa Azad Kamal. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kudi for inviting me to this session and for having collaboration with Open Business Talk at the Open University. Thank you. And you have been working on um, open access, copyright, creative commons, open educational resources for a long time, so far you know. And um, it's being a great um, you know, pleasure to uh, have you in our session today. And you are also a great advocate for Bangladesh to promote open educational resources. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask my some questions um, slowly. So basically there are few focus today's uh, session. Um, one is creative commons, then copyright, open access, open educational resources. We'll try to cover most of the issues. And as I mentioned before, you're welcome to ask your questions and you can type your question to the chat box. I will follow the chat box for our today's presenter. All right, let's go to the main session now. Um, my first question to our speaker, basically this complete session is um, mainly we arrange for question and answer. There are so many complex questions on Creative Commons, copyright, open access, open and free, and Creative Commons licenses. So that's why we arrange this session so we can get some clear um, knowledge on these critical questions. Let's start then. My first question to the, our speaker is, um, about open educational resources. Um, can you please tell our audience what are open educational resources? Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Pradeep. Uh, this is a very vital question because uh, when we use the term open, so that is very important. We know what is the educational resource. So in our teaching learning process, we use a lot of resources. So some are online and some are in printed form. So whatever the form is, uh, whether these are open or not, open means you can use it freely with permission to modify or reuse or redistribute. So you have the permission and you don't need to ask permission from the copyright holder. So when you talk about open educational resources, these are the educational resources. It can be a video, audio, it can be a, a book or whatever it is. You don't need to ask permission for this. And how you'll understand this, whether it is open or not. So it must contain a license. It can be Creative Commons license mostly and some other open license are there too. So you have to look at the license and also you can find some resources which are in public domain. That means these are totally copyright free. So one thing we must uh, remember that when we put the Creative Commons licenses, these are actually copyright licenses. They are not giving up the copyright. So copyright is there, but the permission is now uh, uh, attached to that. So if I have a resource, if I share it with you, if I put a Creative Commons license, that means I got the copyright. Still, I have the copyright, but you are permitted to reuse it or modify depending on the, the license. So when we talk about the uh, open educational resources, the educational resources which are open, 
open not, doesn't mean only that it, it is online. So it is not related to actually online. So it can be online, it can be uh, offline or in printed form, doesn't matter. The matter is whether you can use it without asking the author or copyright holder. You can change it without asking uh, them or uh, the author. So that is the key. So the format can be different. So format is important. Maybe later uh, in another question, you can discuss that why format is important. For example, I am sharing something in JPG format. So now you, when you go to edit it, it will be very difficult. You have to uh, use a sophisticated software if it is available, it may not be available also. So in that case, this uh, sharing doesn't matter. You can use it, but you cannot edit it, you cannot revise it. So the purpose of open is to help the person to revise or customize it so that they cannot uh, uh, need to, they don't need to repeat it again. So the same resource we are using repeatedly. I am using something and you are using the same resource or you are creating the same resource. So that repetition can be stopped if we can promote this open educational resources. I think, uh, yeah. If, excellent, uh, yeah, excellent. So before going to the next question, um, probably I need to just clarify about the public domain uh, because so many audiences are here, probably they don't know about what is public domain. You just have mentioned about the public domain. So the term public domain basically refers to, um, to creative uh, materials that are not protected by intellectual property laws, such as copyright. That means the resources are out of copyright is the public domain. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Mustafa Kamal for your nice uh, answer. My next question is, how is open education resources um, is different uh, from other online materials? Like nowadays, we you know so many online materials, you can see if we just search on Google and see so many materials are available. But are these open educational resources? Definitely not. So there are some difference between the open education resources and online resources. So can you please tell um, us the basic key points and basic difference between these um, open education resources and um, online resources? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, what I mentioned uh, before that uh, if something is online, so online means it's a kind of platform you are sharing the resources. It's a kind of uh, media. So it can be printed, it can be in printed form. So I can share you in hard copy or I can share you in soft copy. In online, I'll, uh, talk about the online resources. So these are actually uh, residing in a, in a platform or in a repository. But when we talk about OER, open educational resources, it's not necessary that that uh, online resource uh, can be downloaded by your own desire. No. So if the, that online resource doesn't belong any 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 uh, open license, then you cannot download. This is a violation of copyright. So the online resource, all the online resources, are not always are uh, open. So for being open, it, it must contain the copyright license. There should be a declaration. And also it should be kind of, yeah, it can be soft or you can copy or edit very softly. That is a part of open. But the basic thing is it must contain a permission or open license because open license covers everything. So any kind of declaration can be fine. So if on the website, you have the declaration that this material can be used, uh, reused, this kind of declaration also works. But when you find the CC licenses, these are copyright licenses. These are uh, legally uh, uh, very strong licenses. So if you find this license and use it, download it and reuse it, you are very much safe. So that's why you, whenever you use any online resources, try to be careful. So you are copying, that means you are uh, violating the copyright law if it is not OER or open uh, educational resources. 
and the danger will happen uh, in near future is uh, whenever you are entering into an online platform, you got a digital identity. So you are creating a digital, uh, that means digital footprint for you. So your footprint is there. So whatever violation you are doing or you are or making, so all the things are printed on your digital footprint. So it will be uh, there. So that's why it is very, very important. So any online resources cannot be downloaded if it is not OER. Um, thank you. I think it covers um, my answer. I can see a question on chat box. Mohammed Mafikul Islam, uh, his question is, how many users use open access content in Bangladesh? how to measure it, and what is your marketing strategy? Uh, well, uh, how many users are using open uh, educational resources? Since we are not using any tracker now, uh, so it may be uh, known from uh, Creative Commons, they have some tracker, but it will be a little bit difficult right now to tell about the number because locally we don't have any tracker and internationally it is just growing now, but they can identify uh, about the, the openly licensed works. But how many people are using, it is still difficult. So it is in the process, maybe very soon we will get it. And the marketing strategy actually, for example, this kind of webinar, in open access week or any other time. So that can be a strategy people can understand because he's here marketing means awareness. So when uh, a few uh, months back, I had a uh, training program, training session uh, under the auspices of UGC and uh, Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia. So there almost uh, 1000 university teachers joined. And I have a plan to an arrange another workshop, another 1,000, uh, very soon, maybe in one month or in uh, or two, uh, so that, that the people can be aware of. And the most important thing is whether we who are interested in open education resources and we want that the people uh, use we are, we should be together. We should be connected. So if we are connected, we arrange some uh, awareness program and from our side, if we just do our work in our own area and we try to sensitize other people, that can be, so it can be top down strategy. I mean, ministry, uh, UGC, they can uh, just uh, undertake some policies and they can top down or some bottom up, like uh, we are sitting here and some inside out strategy can be, uh, uh, can work there also. So within the university, if we can sensitize others, that also works. Yeah, thank you. And on top of that, just I would like to mention uh, with my recent um, unpublished article uh, with the Creative Commons, I haven't published that article. Um, I clearly mentioned in there that there is no significant research on the use of awareness of current intellectual property rights Bangladesh. Um, however, a few research and um, a few researches were conducted in recent years with a specific uh, industry, including law and journalism, library and information science, films and national dailies. And re his research shows that there is a still big concern of copyright law in Bangladesh. Uh, and with the recent economic and educational growth, it is now very important to create the culture of, you know, um, uh, of defense of intellectual property rights and understanding OER, open educational resources and copyright law. This is very, very important. So we need more professional activities as uh, Professor Mustafa Azad Kamal said. Thank you, Professor uh, Mostawa Azad Kamal. Uh, my next question is about copyright. Um, I'm going to uh, ask this 
uh, question basically combination some related um, question what does copyright protect what is not protected by copyright and who owns copyright can you please just um, give us a very briefly answer just key key points um, uh, probably most of uh, are in these sessions are area about copyright just um, we can just highlight the key point about um, uh, what does copyright protect and what is not protected uh, by the copyright. Thank you. In general, yeah, thank you. In general, actually, uh, if you like to know what copyright uh, protects or copyright law protects, uh, you have to look at the copyright law because these things are written there. But in general, uh, copyright works on the uh, creative works. So it can be literary works or it can be anything which is creative. That is very, very important. So if any creative work becomes tangible, becomes tangible, not at, at uh, ideation, ideated form, if it becomes tangible, it is uh, becoming the subject to copyright law because it is automatically copyrighted. So maybe the national law, copyright law, uh, is not telling that it will be op automatically copyrighted, but we have some international conventions where all these countries are the signatories. So in that international convention, it is specified that if something you create, if it is creative work, then it is automatically copyrighted. For example, a uh, lot of things can be, if I develop a video, uh, an audio, or I write a textbook, so whatever academic resource I am producing in case of, so copyright doesn't only uh, confine in academic resources. So maybe in software and some other cases, the, the copyright uh, actually works. So in this case, when we, create any any kind of creative work that is subject to copyright. So it is automatically, I, if I create a book, I write a book, it becomes copyrighted automatically. I don't even uh, register into the copyright uh, office. Excellent. So it can be anything. Uh, yes, yeah, that's excellent. Um, the supplementary question, how do I prove um, I'm the copyright owner if there is no registration system? Okay, so what I said, uh, if it is tangible, if I publish somewhere, if I share it with others, if it is printed somewhere. So for example, in I am putting uh, a, a, uh, some text. So this is uh, something because on Facebook, they have a standard license, which is uh, uh, copyrighted. So it is not an open license. So in that case, uh, if we uh, share something on Facebook, and if I copy it from your uh, uh, page and I post it somewhere or use somewhere without your permission, it is a violation of copyright law. So copyright is, becomes automatic. So you don't need to worry for that, but it must be tangible, it must be recorded in, in some form so that you can claim. But best thing is be registered with copyright office because it is more authentic. If you like to uh, uh, just uh, uh, face it in a trial or court, then you must prove something. But conventionally, it is automatic. So as per the Barney Convention, copyright is automatic. So if you- uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, that is very really uh, important to know that anyone creates something, it is not legally, necessary to have registration that you are the copyright holder or you are the copyright owner. So basically copyright is automatic. How do you can understand the copyright is automatic. So if you create something, you are the copyright holder. You are the owner of the copyright and it's automatic, but it should be intangible for me. That, um, that's clear for us. Thank you. Very nice discussion. Um, I can see on question on um, the chat box. Um, let me read the name, um, Moshi Rahman. 
And his question is, how to publish a textbook with Creative Commons license in printed format? Okay, so we will answer because uh, you are the right person to answer that. If you like, I can uh, yeah, respond or you can respond to that because you are, uh, for a long time, you are uh, involved with these things because you are the editor <laughs> of, uh, of Librarian Times. So yeah, that is, um, yeah, <laughs> you are more expert than me. Just, I am still learning and trying to understand uh, the philosophy behind the Creative Commons license. That is really a good question. How we can use Creative Commons license for printed book? Uh, of course, we can uh, publish um, printed um, copy with the Creative Commons license. And in that case, um, according to the guideline for Creative Commons, um, definitely we, need, we have some cost involved in uh, publishing printed copy. Um, and in that case, you can um, also um, take some money from the users. I mean, the buyers or, or the users. Like you, you can sell the book with the minimum cost to cover your printed copy. But basically, whatever we can see, uh, many, many books, uh, textbooks, and other um, books, uh, currently are published using Creative Commons license. So definitely you can use Creative Commons license and you can use um, uh, Creative Commons license for printed book as well. But how you can publish? There are clear guidelines about how to use and what license you should use in your uh, printed book. Um, you can get the guidelines. So it can be a, a long discussion, but definitely uh, as, as I can say, you can use the Creative Commons license to publish a printed book. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, just they can use the logo and uh, they can go to uh, the Creative Commons page. They can create a uh, license there. So as per uh, their uh, sharing options. So what they want to want other people uh, to play with their materials. For example, if uh, they want uh, that the, this material will be reused uh, this material can be edited or remixed so there is a license there so the, choose the exact license so the logo is there so you can put the logo on first inner cover where you the copyright declaration is there that's fine and uh, you will see in creative common space or uh, in uh, common of learning so they have OSIS. so they have a lot of materials there so these are also printed and, and digital version is there so they can see how uh, these are written on the uh, on the printed uh, matrix also. Thank you. Excellent. Um, hopefully you got your answer, but uh, we are happy to help how to use Creative Commons license to publish a printed book. And I I can see another question um, on chat box. Dr. Mohammed Jahir Raihan. He has mentioned, I have been caught using someone else's copyrighted work without permission. What can I do? Uh, Professor Mostwazad Kamal. So if uh, someone is caught by, for using the copyrighted work of others. Without permission. Only, yeah, only option is to talk to that person and uh, just convince him so that he or she doesn't go to the court. Except that there is no other option. Only that person can pardon you because law will not allow uh, or support you here because there is no option. And one most important thing is what type of use you actually make here. So if you uh, your use of uh, the content which is copyright because copyright got exceptions also you know mm -hmm. the fair use fair dealing is there yeah. so if it uh, falls into fair use you are safe that means fair use doesn't mean that you can take one chapter from one another book you can take one page from another book so when we cite in the research papers so these are the fair use things so then you have to look into the 
the uh, the copyright law in that country so in some countries you can copy the whole because it is permitted in that area but you are not permitted for in canada they for the educational materials uh, within the university they can copy but from bangladesh i cannot uh, download it because my copyright law doesn't permit for that and it is i am not allowed to to uh, enjoy that that uh, that option or, or that provision so that's why when you violate just talk to the the author or copyright holder and try to convince them if your use is not fair use that's all there is no other option yeah yeah on top of that just i would like to mention um, um a very small thing here like if you know the copyright like as as most of us have come all mentioned that um um the provision about fair use and fair dealing like Bang mostly in bangladesh um bangladesh is fair dealing so far you know fair dealings so uh, under uh, yeah so under these dealings um if you can prove that you um like um uh, copy from others uh, work under the fair dealings and you can talk to the um uh, copyright holder that you, you you are using that provision and um and you understand that i uh, you, you should take permission before you use that um copy so that would be the better solutions um instead of going to the court thank you um there is another question in the chat box uh but i cannot see the name who is that person abdul ro maybe abdul ro um we know different plagiarism detector tools for journal publication phd papers etc is there any tools for other areas like video art anthropology voice structure area yeah Yeah. Um, do you understand the question, Professor uh, Mustafa yeah. Zafran? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, there is a confusion here. You know, sometimes we, uh, when we check plagiarism, plagiarism, that means how, how much, uh, how uh, much you are copying from other sources. So, plagiarism, plagiarism is not telling you, basically, not telling you clearly that you are violating copyright, because. plagiarism will tell what are the the sentences or words are repeated from uh, other published works so if you get permission uh, from for example uh, from five publishers or five uh, 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 journal articles if you got the permission then even if you 100% if you find the 100% uh, uh, plagiarism it doesn't matter because this is not the violation of copyright the matter is the plagiarism may not be allowed uh by the university where you are working or by the publisher uh with whom uh, you are uh, attached so that is a different thing but for bdu and other uh, contents like audio video of course uh in terms of title that is okay right now you can just uh, verify whether so you can google you can find little bit whether uh, that video has been taken from anywhere you can search but without ai this kind of detection is very difficult so if yeah i think uh, it will uh, come very soon that by using ai you can just uh, uh, see which has been uh, plagiarized in terms of uh video or image or uh music but i don't know uh, right now turn it in cannot do it and this kind of software cannot do that but uh, maybe uh, uh mr pradeep you can share because you are working uh, uh in that line uh, with the library for a long time so if you have an idea is there any tool to detect whether because the, the main uh, uh option can be the the title or the caption so that can be searched but yeah, that, uh, that definitely of the video itself cannot be detected uh, the... that 
the question is clear here that the is there any tool um that the voice or video can detect like um uh, the mostly uses um plagiarism plagiarism tool openly use um is there any uh, what is the tool currently used worldwide there are some um open source as well um in bangladesh mostly a um, few universities they have subscribed the plagiarism tool but that tool also uh, that and i i'm sure that that tools not cover um uh, checking the video um or voice um, um i'm sorry that i i don't know is there any latest technology that can detect the voice um but let us explore these things one that thing is a really good question yeah we can, we noticed one thing that uh, if you just download on video uh, from uh, somewhere and upload it into youtube they can catch you even if you put another caption or another title it doesn't matter because they are using higher level of uh, ai so that's why they can capture easily they can capture but these are not publicly used so so far i understand yeah so so far i understand like for facebook yeah if we like use any music or bollywood music or hollywood music the facebook easily catch up they mute it there's no you are not permitted um uh, uh-huh. for this music or for this video they yes. don't allow you to so that is the technology they they catch it um and they said no we are not going to publish your uh, video because you are not, not copyright holder you are not right person for that so that that's definitely that that kind of technology to um catch up the voice and video as well but specifically for the organizations for subscription i'm not sure is there any uh, tools yet to subscribe and to test thank you um and before i don't think so any question in the chat box right now but i can ask some question on creative commons um this question is for mustafa azad kamal again what is creative commons and is creative commons against the copyright okay so um, the most important thing is why creative commons is there you know the the uh, law and uh, blessings so uh, blessings who is the the founder of creative commons he actually fought against the copyright for a longer time you know that and then he failed <laughs> see in the court even he, he fought uh, against this uh, in the court but uh, he failed eventually then he created this option so a company like uh, named kitty commons in 2001 and from there they started to uh, create a culture of open sharing so kitty commons is an ngo basically uh, it is based on non profit ngo you can say and it is based in usa they are promoting this kind of uh, open sharing so now they have uh, uh, licenses open licenses which is widely used all over the world and uh, they have a lot of advocacy and they are supporting the, the people who are dealing with these licenses and licenses are very much copyright licenses so there is no conflict with that so to uh, put a open license like cc license you must the first condition is the things must be copyrighted because if i don't have the copyright on the material i cannot use cc license so creative commons promotes uh, the open sharing of the copyrighted works that means i have the copyright i will put the creative commons license that means i am permitting you uh, uh, to reuse or revise whatever the option is there but if you violate if you go beyond this those uh, permissions then i can sue against you as per or under the copyright law because copyright holder is me and all the creative commons licenses are copyright licenses that means on the copyright they are putting these licenses so there is no conflict because without copyright creative commons is nothing 
And uh, another thing is, sometimes we say CC0, that means another license. Uh, this is uh, indicating that it's a, in public domain. So CC0 means if you like to put your resource in public domain, you know the public domain uh, actually qualifies the works uh, after the death of the author, after maybe 50 years after the death of the author because uh, the copyright law permits sometimes 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, in some cases, 90 years so after the death of the author. So it automatically becomes copyright free. So it goes to a public domain. But now, since I'm allowed, if I want to share something openly and I, I, I like to put into the public domain, I can put CC0. So that license is not exactly CC license. So they are uh, uh, putting this to uh, indicate or to uh, mention that this resource is in public domain, but within the lifetime of the author or creator. Thank you. Thank you. Very well answered. I cannot see any question in the chat box. Abdul said, thank you, sir, for your valuable discussion about plagiarism. Now I am going to ask another question um, that is really important. Um, like the question is, if I um, publish or if my article has been published in a magazine, can I now allow it to be used in another publication? So you know this very well. So if someone published something in the life and times, so copyright belongs to that person or to you because you have a contact with them. So when I publish something, upload something, I have to go for a sign an agreement. Like uh, so sometimes we don't notice the, the uh, license agreement or notice the uh, agreement on the because Anytime we like to publish something, there are some conditions. So we agree on that. By clicking there, we agree on the terms and conditions for that website. So in that uh, terms of condition, we don't uh, read this uh, terms of condition as a whole. So when I publish somewhere, always you will find in most of the cases, so in can be exceptions. In most of the cases, copyright belongs to the publisher. So I cannot share it. I don't have any right to share it with others without the permission of the publisher. Yes, I still have the moral right. I can use it. I can reuse it for my own purpose, but I cannot share it openly with others. Maybe within the class, I can share it with the student, but open sharing is not uh, permitted if uh, the publisher got the copyright. Sometimes they do it, but uh, I don't know. You can clarify it more. No, thank you. Um, that, that's absolutely right. It depends like for open access, for golden open access, um, when the author agreed with the publisher, like in that case, like author need to pay for that. And the author is still can have the um, copyright. Yeah, that, that journal is open access journal. Yeah. So the yeah. journal yeah. is open. Yeah. So when I'm putting this, uh, yeah, journal, yeah. Uh, so got the information that anyone can download, anyone can use it. Yeah, so, so that, it, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it, yeah, I think uh, one thing can be uh, uh, just request. We can request the, the the participants if you publish a paper, don't publish uh, it in a, a pay world journal. Publish it into open access journal, so that you can use it for your exposure later. Exactly. Thanks. Thank you. Very. A nice answer. Uh, I can see another question from Mafikul Islam. Is Creative Commons against copyright? We have just um, discussed on this issue, uh, Mafikul. Um, the short answer is no. Creative Commons is not against copyright. Thank you. Um, I have another question, Professor uh, Mostafa Azad Kamal. I want to write a novel based on the central theme of another work. Can I do this? Uh, I, so, want to write, I want to write a novel, but the central theme from other works. Can I do this? So 
So if the theme is uh, actually uh, tangible, the theme is tangible, then uh, you need to, because if it is an idea, so idea cannot be copyrighted. So if you talk to someone and someone gave you the idea, then you start writing, that's okay. But if that is intangible form, it is published somewhere. So then you can uh, take that uh, uh, the theme if it is not uh, like uh, copyrighted. So you have to look at the theme. If it is not copyrighted, then uh, you uh, can use that theme. But if it is copyrighted, you need the permission. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So basically from my understanding that any theme or idea, if it is not in published format, it is not copyright protected. So basically you can use, like you are talking um, something uh, on something else with your friend or your colleagues and they share their idea and you use their idea to write your book or to write your novel. That is not protected by copyright. You can use uh, the discussion point and you can use the idea from your friends or colleagues, um, but those idea or theme will not be under copyright protected. So you, you are free to utilize also, the theme. I think, uh, yeah, just one minute. Uh, also, uh, we have to look into the copyright law because uh, the law of the land is very, very, very important. So if you look at the copyright law of, that, of your country, so maybe something is specified there. In general, for example, in US law, you will find that uh, the procedures, methods, process, or system these are not subject to copyright law. So mm -hmm. for example, uh, a production method or podcast method or recording method. So you can use the same method uh, in your recording because uh, it is not copyright uh, protected. So that's why you have to look at the law also. Law sometimes more uh, clarify more because these are not the general thing. So you have to uh, look at the uh, burning convention. So this is the general uh, international convention. So people uh, in the country signed on that. So if you have this kind of provisions there, that is also uh, good for you. It is safe for you. Thank you. Um, I can see one question in the chat, chat box. Uh, button sust. He asked that, how does copyright affect the library and library users? Can libraries scan book? Okay, so, <laughs> so you, are, you are working uh, there on, on uh, these things again. But uh, I, just for my idea, so when you copy something, if you scan, that means you are copying. You are downloading, you are copying. So since you are scanning, so it's a violation of clear violation of copyright law. This is one thing. Another thing is, uh, is said, uh, does copyright affect the library and library user? Of course, because uh, you have to check whether how many books uh, in the library are bought from, since we are in Bangladesh, so I can say uh, bought from Nilkhet and uh, how many books have been bought for from original publishers so look at that if a number of books are from this local uh, market like nilkhet or something like that and uh, if you are not aware of this kind of uh, copyright things in, in some cases that is a threat so the someone who is uh, photocopying this book or who is using this book, that's not a problem for them, but for the library, it's a problem. Library as a the part of the institution, you cannot keep something which is not uh, actually uh, supporting the copyright. So that is one thing. So that's why the library can uh, create their open uh, access repositories. So they can add all these uh, open access repositories for books, for journals, etc. So in that case, I think uh, they can transform the present uh, status to uh, that uh, open sharing status. Thank you. Yeah, um, like as a librarian, I can clearly say that um, 
we should know the copyright law in the library because we are dealing with resources that protected by copyright law. Um, what can we copy? What we cannot? And we should strictly follow the rule um, legally or ethically. So we should know the copyright law in that country. Uh, we are about to finish our discussion. We, we have only five minutes to go. Um, uh, before ending the session, I have one more question, but before looking at that question, I can say another new question came from Tariqul Islam. Is downloading article from SciHub web portal? Is downloading article for, no, the question is not clear. Do you mean the downloading from SciHub portal is legal or illegal? The question is not clear here. I think he uh, wanted to know, uh, uh, is it permitted to download the articles from SciHub? SciHub is a, uh, you know, pirated, total pirated. So it is totally, uh, in terms of copyright law, it is totally illegal. So uh, people are downloading. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay, but uh, uh, these are subject to copyright because yes. SciHub is totally, it is not uh, legally endorsed yet. Yeah, and so including yeah. from the world uh, publishers and they are putting everything together. By almost 50 million articles are there. So uh, most of the articles are not all the articles because I have also includes the, the open access articles. But they are downloading from everyone. So uh, these includes the, the Elsevier or other uh, publishers also. So yeah. that's what, and they are under uh, trial now uh, yeah. in court, any US court. Yeah. Very good information. Thank you. Hopefully, um, uh, who asked the question? And Tariqul Islam, yeah. Tariqul, um, I would like to just add one thing. Like I work in Australia, mainly we got um, official letter from Elsevier asking we should not allow our users, our students, our staff to access to Sci-Hub. We, we spend a million or million dollar um, for subscribing Elsevier um, resources, while many countries, they illegally download resources from SciHub. And as Mustafa Azad Kamal just said that um, there, there is a case, not one case, the multiple case is going on uh, against SciHub. And SciHub based in Russia, that's why probably US can, cannot do anything, but um, using any resources from SIAP is not ethical and is not legal. That is for sure. But not all this, um, only the resources you can download, those are open access or open education resources. That's, that's the similar rule as other open educational databases. Hopefully you get your answer. And last question I can see, how I can work with Creative Commons team in Bangladesh? Mustafa Azad Kamal. Yeah, you can keep in touch with you and me. Uh, so these are the people from Bangladesh. So uh, in Creative Commons Bangladesh, this is the team working there. So uh, we have to explore uh, the possibilities of including all the, the open activists in Bangladesh or Bangladeshis outside the country in this team. So let us explore how we can proceed so we can uh, connect all the, the, the people who are very much aware of or sens sensitized already uh, about this open sharing and uh, using open resources or creating open resources. So it will take time. So I don't think that it will take uh, too much time. So it is a good question. Uh, let us uh, try to explore how we can proceed. Thank you. Um, we are about to finish as 
we said that the program will be completely for an hour and it is uh, in Bangladesh time like 1130 we are about to finish I would like to thank you our um, today's audiences and our speaker professor Mustafa Kamal for his um, time and um, celebrating the creative sorry um, open access week 2021 I am going to uh, publish this recording version to the public so the people who are interested in creative commons open access or copyright things they can later on watch this video and they can understand what the discussion we had today so thank you once again professor mustawazat kamal for your time thank you thank you very much for uh, adding me into this very uh, vibrant and uh, meaningful discussion and thanks also, uh, also for uh, including uh, Open Business Talk, School of Business Bangladesh Open University with this initiative. So hope that we will work together further in near future and uh, we will uh, try to explore more opportunities for this kind of discussions. Thank you. Thanks everyone again and keep uh, stay in touch with us to involve with Creative Commons or open educational resources or copyright things. And uh, just, um, I would like to request everyone to get involved and promote the open access, promote open educational resources because education is a fundamental human rights. Thank you everyone and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.